Hey everyone, this is TG from ToyGander.com and today we're going to review the Revo K101 Plus. So let's go ahead and take a gander. Alright gang, we're going to go ahead and unbox this. Now I've actually wanted this for a while. Uh, looking at all the different options for Game Boy Advance, I was looking back at the old catalog of, of Game Boy Advance games. There's a lot of good ones out there. So looking into my options for consoles, you have Game Boy Advance, you have Game Boy Advance SP, and then you have uh, this, the Revo K101 Plus. Uh, there's also a couple other options, like uh, if I want to do some of the emulation, there's PSP and just, you know, some, uh, some other handheld options that are out there. I was really finding that this is one of the best and the main reason is is the screen now if you think back to the Game Boy Advance there's no backlight there's no light at all you, there was some little cord worm thing that hangs on the uh, on top, the top here that uh, puts out a little dim light and I didn't want that I want something that was lit and so I started looking at Game Boy Advance SP models and I would I couldn't believe how dark they were and I don't know if I just remember them a lot brighter but uh, actually turning it on and trying to play it it was just unbearable it, you couldn't really play it because it was just so dark because they were front lit and I, I then started looking into it there's some backlit options for the Game Boy SP but those the cost really goes up now considering the cost on this this includes a flash cart into it I'll show you right here this is the flash card and you put a SD card, mini SD card right in there and you, it plays all the ROMs and it plays it on its normal hardware. This is a Game Boy Advance clone so it's playing the original hardware on this. Now one word of caution, this does not play in anything else other than this. I've tried it in a, a Nintendo DS light and it just does not work so that was one thing that I didn't find online I wasn't too sure uh, no one really talked about it but it, it is only exclusive to this so uh, when I was looking at the options the screen was the biggest the the biggest thing that I was looking for uh, just a nice bright decent sized screen and I like the horizontal layout the one thing the one problem that I have with the Nintendo DS Lite when playing this is it has two screens and it's, you're only utilizing one. So let's go ahead and turn it on and I'll show you. You hold this side button right here. So it loads right up. I will put in the description below on the firmware and the, the different things that you need to put into the micro SD. Uh, I had a little bit of a difficult time finding some of the stuff, but it is out there and I'll put it in the description so you could just uh, drag and drop it and then play. So you go into systems, and here are the games right here. So we'll go ahead and play, let's see, play Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. Great game. And as you can see, it plays exactly like it normally would. The screen is nice and bright, and there's an option here. This brightness screen, just you press it a million times and it has a million different options on how bright it goes. So one of the things I will say, as great as the screen is, the aspect ratio is just a hair off. And for those that really like to have an eye for detail, you'll notice it. It, it doesn't really ruin the gameplay. It doesn't, it's not enough noticeable enough to where you're going to say, Oh, I wouldn't get this. I don't know if you can kind of tell here, but it plays like it normally would. Because it's a Game Boy hardware clone, it's going to play exactly like it should. One of the other cool features on here, if you press the this button right here, the light button and the L, it's going to go to this screen and there's Game Cheats, so it's a Game Shark built right within it. And you can go to all the different options. Each game has its own individual cheats. Just a just a bonus feature, I think. Okay, let's return to the file list. So one of the things that I saw online, uh, everyone said that this was able to play some of the games that use the gyro gyroscope technology. 
like WarioWare Twisted. So I'll show you exactly um, what I mean. I can't get this thing to work and I'm not too sure why. So you can kind of see, I'm twisting and turning and nothing's moving along with it. So I don't know if there's an option on there somewhere that I'm just not seeing. But if you know, in the please put it in the comments. Uh, that way we can, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to play a game like this. So uh, one of the other things that I will say, uh, bonus thing on here is the you can play Nintendo games and they're fairly accurate they 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 play as an emulation so it's not quite right but they play well enough to where it still will be an enjoyable experience there may, there's a little bit of slowdown just a little bit of lag but it's not enough to make it unplayable. Sometimes the sound is a little bit off and I noticed that playing I think Super Mario Brothers 3. But other than that it's not too bad. Trying to play Super Nintendo games and Genesis games it is not worth it. I wouldn't even bother trying to put them on here. Th what I would get this machine for is I would get it for Game Boy Advance exclusively and as an added bonus you could play NES games. Now just talking on the the actual hardware itself and how it feels when I took it out of the box I, I'll say my first impression on this it's a little bit lighter when you get a, a Nintendo console or a handheld you put it in your hands and it just has a certain quality, a real solid quality feel to it. This one was just a little bit lacking and at first it put me off. It wasn't until I, I actually got it in my hands, started playing it a little bit more, it, it grew on me and I really enjoy it now. But the, the overall quality just as a handheld, just first impressions, I'll say it feels a little bit cheap. The, the shoulder buttons also a little bit mushy. Not enough to, for me to, to be turned off by it, but I will say those were probably the two cons that I have. The other buttons feel pretty solid. Now, when I got this, I actually requested for one in black. I really despise the clear casing. I don't know why anyone would want to see it. It just overall gives it a cheaper feel, and it feels like a cheaper plastic, too. So I'm not too sure. Um, the, unfortunately, when I when I ordered it, they said they were back ordered. So they gave me the option of of getting a clear one, and I said yes. But just give me that one because I wanted to really play with. So if I were to get this again, I would definitely get it in a different casing. But um, the overall feel is not too bad. One of the cool features on this is the TV out. So they it came with this cord right here. We'll plug it in and see how it compares. Okay, so we have everything plugged in here. Now this is just a regular cord. It just like a seems like a regular generic cord here. Um, fits pretty tight. Let's turn it on. My when I look at it, it actually looks pretty decent. Now I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a little bit of humming, like a little buzzing. And when you when you fiddle with this cord a little bit it kind of glitches out. The humming is a little bit less now, but uh, it doesn't seem very secure. Let's go ahead and play... Now I like to keep my, my TV ratio at 4 by 3 because if you were to scale it to 16 by 9 it just doesn't look right. So in this in the 4 by 3 format it, it actually looks pretty good. Now I have a Game Boy Advance player for the GameCube and I'll say it's for the most part it's on par with that. It may be just a little bit a uh, little bit lower in quality for the upscaling. Oh yeah I forgot this has a million 
million second uh, intro. Let's just play one other one that has quick intro. Um, let's do Mario Kart. This doesn't look too bad here. Definitely not the same quality as like a Wii U when they when they port some things over to the Wii U. Wii U they they smooth out a lot of these these graphics and just make it a cleaner pr presentation. So final thoughts on this guys. If you are in the market for a GBA handheld looking at all the options out there I definitely think that this is one of the best options considering the screen the ability to play all your games onto one card the buttons the feel the the durability this is probably one of the best things out there uh, maybe with the exception of a Game Boy Advance SP backlit but even then as far as the price goes you're still not able to play all the games onto one card uh, PSP also might be a good option for emulation if you're willing to do emulation. It, it's a little bit different than going on the actual hardware, but still an overall good option. So with that being said, uh, I do recommend that you click that thumbs up button. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We have tons of other videos out there like this, so go ahead and check those out. And until next time, you can help us take a gander.